So we are at the booth now of Fiber 3, and that one is one of the most exciting newcomers that I was actually really, really rooting for. They recently started a Kickstarter campaign, and they already raised a million in six hours. So the thing about this Fiber 3 printers is that actually, you can see it here on the screen a little bit, it mixes plastic with carbon fiber, but it's continuous carbon fiber. You all saw my videos about the chopped carbon fiber and how it makes your parts weaker. And this one actually lays a continuous string of carbon fiber inside your part. So you can design where it gets uh, stronger and where it's uh, not that strong. But like there, you don't have all the problems you have with chopped carbon fiber, like the disturbance of the polymer chains anymore, because you have a carbon part inside. It's basically like doing carbon fiber in a press mold. So it actually has two nozzles. One of them is printing the polymer itself. And the other one is actually printing a mix of the carbon fibers itself and another polymer to make a mantle around it. And so you can design where the carbon fiber lays. So you can actually design parts that are stiff in one direction and flexible in the other. I already work with a technology like that from Markforge and the possibilities are endless. So why I am so excited about that product is the price tag. Look at it, $2,699, Kickstarter price of course, but even later it will be around 5K. And that's actually huge because a marked forge or industrial machine that do the same thing costs like 30, 40, 50K. And with this one, continuous carbon fiber could actually come to the consumer market. And I'm like all for that printing strong parts that are as strong as like aluminum or steel. I'm here with Ryan Liu, he's the CEO of FiberSeek. Uh, we will talk about a little bit about his first ever product actually. And like, I mean, look at that beauty. So what, what drove you to uh, get into the technology of continuous fiber printing? So I've been working with uh, continuous carbon fiber technology for like more than five years, but previously, we work at a nicer print, which is like more like on the industrial side, like B2B, quite expensive machines. Yeah, but throughout the journey, journey, so I've always had a constant like chat with like engineers, especially young engineers and myself, which love the, to print strong parts with continuous carbon fiber, but they couldn't afford it or they couldn't get their boss to approve yeah. on the uh, like procurement. Yeah. And uh, I think so I always had the desire to really democratize this technology, to make a machine that is user friendly and you know, and as, as affordable as possible. And also the material, so every engineer or even hobbyist could ac have access to this power because who doesn't want to print strong parts, right? Oh yeah, that's absolutely true. So the thing is, uh, like your price is very competitive, especially for uh, continuous carbon fiber printing, because other machines are like in the tenth of thousand. Twenty thousand, twenty grand starting point, I think. Yeah, but that was like the low end of it. <laughs> so normally it's like 35, 45 where you started a few years ago. But did you specifically design it to also have a machine that the maker community is able to afford? Yeah, we do. Because uh, I think uh, myself, right? Um, I'm not a drone person, but I know a lot of people who play around with drones would love to print with continuous carbon fiber because then your drone will never break. Yeah. It's perfect application for drone structure and structure parts. But I myself, I'm like a carding person, so I love to customize my carding car. So to print a lot of like, you know, brick panel, uh, yeah, panels and parts for the, the carding car, it's like my hobby. So I think a lot of people are like myself, right? Do you can print your robotics, you like you you print your like your boats, whatever, right? Your to anything. Yeah, that actually brings me to my next question: is what what is the field you see this machine being most useful or disruptive in? I think it, yeah. As easy to understand, like anything that is strong. So this, it, it works as a, like FDM. So it's like high-end FDM, and it does everything what FDM does. But uh, in, on the, you know, in addition, you have this continuous carbon fiber, which, when you if you add a lot of fiber, it becomes even as strong as metal. So in any scenarios you need like strong functional parts, you could apply. This matter is like in the, in, in the uh, industrial. You can do like engineering prototypes for like, you know, strength material, parts with strengths. Well, you could just do like also like toolings, strong jigs and features to replace the CNC uh, tools. And then for some uh, product and use product, you could also like design the part with continuous carbon fiber because it will last and will be enjoying the impact. And also I think it would be awesome because for like hobbyists, 
to play around with like strong parts like for the you know, for personal tool at your garage. Yep. Or for your like maybe you have old car that you, you want to fix, but you cannot find like the spare parts, so yeah, you can print them. Uh, and finally get away from that awful carbon fiber reinforced PLA, what they sell everywhere. Like, <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't make sense, you can still break it. Yeah. But I, I recently did a video on it and it's it's it weak. Oh yeah. Different. Can, oh, can I try? You can try it. Yeah, I can hold it. <laughs> Feel the difference. Yeah. But, wow! Yeah, it's just one few lines. Oh, you see my knuckles getting like red and white. Yeah, it's really but strong. Just... And this one, I will not. Yeah, you can. I know how it. Like I, I yeah. just did a video on carbon fiber you reinforced. Can with your hand. My results actually say it's weaker than PLA. Yes. You know why? I, can, I am a PhD of like yeah. kind of I can. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah. Geeky, uh, like uh, geeky. Yeah. Well, because you add like chopped carbon fiber grains, it actually uh, it's not good for the uh, adhering, yeah. it's for the bonding. So the actually, polymer bonding the is disrupted. It's exactly. disrupted, it's weakened. Exactly. Wait, That's I why it's not even stronger, but if you really do like scientific research on it, it's actually weaker on the tensors. Yeah, that's actually what we did. I work at a university yeah, yeah. and we did a paper about carbon oh, fiber. Nice. I'm trying to show you it. Yeah, because the chopper carbon fiber is not good actually for strands, but for surface finish, because yeah. it gives a more, you know, Jones modulus and then the, like it reduces flow. So it's less mm -hmm. viscous. So in print, you get less like layer lines. Yeah. But for strands, not really. But if for hardness and surface finish is good. For strands, yeah. you really want the continuous fiber. We have, that's the chopped carbon fiber in the SEM imaging. It's just awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so actually we found out that even the Young's modulus goes yeah. down, not up. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And even in three-point bending, the material was weaker. That's why I'm so hyped yeah. about this one. So you just, you can just reinforce PLA with continuous fiber. I think uh, we do some tensor tests. You can do it yourself you, yeah. when you get machine. So like this result could go up to 900 pascal, mega pascal on oh, yeah. yeah, we actually plan to, to test those parts in mechanical testing, SEM imaging yeah, and everything. data from real like testing machines. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah but, like we want to do that ourselves. We Which never trust the manufacturer. Okay. <laughs> okay, do it yourself. Okay, but that's awesome. Uh, those guys are already started their Kickstarter campaign. It got live like two days ago, right? One days ago, yesterday. Yesterday, okay. And they actually raised a million in the first six hours, congrats to that. Thank you so much. Huge, huge success. But I mean, it's a no-brainer. A machine in that price tag that can do continuous carbon fiber and the parts look really nice. Thanks. Can you combine any material with the carbon fiber? So we have our like own patented like CFC, which is called like composite fiber co-extruding technology, which you can easily bend on. You, your coil should be like the already uh, top, um, pre pre impregnated yeah. fiber with this like plastic, so it unlocks on, on any kinds of base materials. So you can put the same fiber on any kinds of plastics out of your selection. No matter it's PLA, PDG, or you can go also PA. You can also reinforce PACF, yep. you, which means you use chopped and continuous fiber together. Oh, nice. And you can have the, the nice surface finish and they and eat the like and, the and, and, and then the real strands. That's really cool. And okay. you can do even like is this uh, production machine has a heated chamber. Mm -hmm. So you can print like PPA, PPS. Yeah, okay. easily. So it has a heated it's chamber even. Okay. The production version. So this is all prototypes. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. These are still prototypes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in the production version, which we are already manufacturing right now in our factory, yeah, it's equipped with like heated chamber. Yeah. So this is actually not one of those projects that is still in in development or something like that. As you see, they have ready-made machines here, and they will ship. You said February, right? February 2026, we're gonna start shipping. So we're already ramping up in production. So yeah. So the uh, parts. The supply chain has already been ordered, so we're like, yeah, working really hard to 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 get them down. Yeah. That's really cool, okay. Time. So the material itself, will it be proprietary or can you put everything in? So you can put everything in for the plastics, but you just have to get fiber from us because like, that's our know-how. Yeah. And that's like, before developing the machine, we actually started developing the material first. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Yeah. So the fiber, but it's only $49 for, per spool. Okay. But before the fibers is actually so expensive on other systems, like yeah. hundreds of dollars per spool. Right now it's $49 per spool, 
and you can use one spoon to reinforce, I think on the average, five spools of filaments. So five kilograms of filament reinforced with one spool of... Yeah. Wow, it's that's really cool. Much of it, right? Because it's very light band and you just need a few layers and it's already give you enough strength for most of cases. And you have your own slicing software to design the carbon fiber path? It's just like a lot, most of the work is actually on the software. So since like the plan of pass of the carbon fiber is totally different than the FDM glue gun, it's so you have different like constraints. Yeah. So that's like you know a hundred pages of like differential equation to to guide you through the fiber path. So that's also our proprietary uh, software slice, but it's so free. Okay. Yeah. Can you uh, lay those fibers non-planner or are they always planner uh, by now? One is just planner, sure. but we're working on the. On the non-planner yeah. version. Okay, that's awesome. Cool. Thank you very much for introducing us to that machine. And like, yeah, yeah. maybe we'll do some tests in the future. So here you can see some of their samples. And if you look very closely here, the outside here is now, I think it's a PETG. And the inside, the black one, is carbon fiber with PETG. But if you look very closely, you see that there is a line of true carbon fiber in the middle. It actually comes from a spool and gets cut whenever the line ends. And it's surrounded by plastic. But it adheres to each other like you would classically resin bind uh, carbon fiber to each other. And I think with that, you can produce super hard parts. like. I don't think, I know. I produce parts for industry, for aerospace, with the same technology they actually use here. But uh, of course, back then it was proprietary. You can really design the way your parts have the carbon fiber in it. So you only use the expensive carbon fiber where it actually is necessary for the strength of your part. And the rest, you just print in normal plastic. And this gives you part for the price tag close to a normal 3D printer, but actually with the strength as you would mill it out of steel or aluminum. It's really, really cool. They have some very cool use cases here. Of course, it's a very young company. As I know, it's their first product. <laughs> but they already gone into, for example, drone building, as you see over there. They go into industrial grippers. And here there is a little drone that actually has carbon fiber on the outside as a bumper where the force actually hits. So that's the other cool thing. You can design your carbon fiber to be wherever you need it and not just be everywhere the same amount. And that's something new because you can't do that with carbon fiber reinforced uh, material where you have a chopped carbon fiber. We actually are in talks with uh, Fiber3 about a little collaboration that we work together and maybe bring that uh, technology to the channel to show you what you can do with it. And with the price tag, you could buy one for home. It's not that much more than an H2D.